Uh, Jamie, you made an a interesting comment in your, in your uh, lecture yesterday. You referred to the theologian as ethnographer. I presume we could equally say pastor as ethnographer. Uh, Jay, um, I've noticed in your congregation, though you've presumably never called yourself an ethnographer, uh, extremely aware of, of yourself and your congregation. There's a, there's an, uh, an quite evident um, attunement that you have to your congregation that I presume reflects what, what Jamie's talking about. Let's, let's think this through. You know, there's a lot of talk these days as the pastor is theologian, which is certainly a good thing. Um, what would it mean to speak of the pastor as ethnographer, and how does that fit within this whole um, liturgical project? Can we define that a minute? Just so what does ethnographer mean in the yeah, way you're so going to use it? Yeah, so I'm thinking of ethnography as um, I, one of my best friends is a sociologist. And in sociology, there's a difference between studying social groups by means of surveys and generating data and instruments like that, as opposed to a more anthropological uh, way to study social groups where you actually sort of attend to what they do, right? You're a participant observer. You're embedded in a community of practice. And instead of just asking them what they think, you read their practices to see what does what they do say about who they are. So think of ethnography in that sense. There's actually a really rich conversation now. Uh, there's a series of books that are coming out on ecclesiology and ethnography that I think would be a great literature for theological education to, to start thinking about. And, and I would say that, and I agree with that sort of the way you're coming at it, there's a difference between uh, being an ethnographer in the setting, maybe even as an outsider or as somebody who's trying to move in, and, and that work of being attuned to that as leader. Yes, great. So as pastor, so those are two different, I mean, to, to do that. So in my own role, you mentioned pastor as ethnographer. Um, in a ways, that's, that's the eyes of the shepherd over the sheep. You know, what, you know, who's coming today with what? Who is, and, and I kind of, I do spend time at the beginning of the, of the congregation uh, looking out over the congregation. I learned that in another tradition, actually, in a charismatic tradition, where there was a sense of what is the spirit doing, yeah. you know, and being attuned to that. Uh, I'm not checking to see who's there and who's not there, uh, which some people think that's what's going on. <laughs> it's, it's not that. It's that I, I want to be in that place where I can sort of read or at least be open to discernment in the spirit mm. about what, um, where, the, where the people of God are, how they're coming, and how, they're, how, how then their engagement with the, the, the form of liturgy and worship, uh, where that might take us and what God might do. So that's very different, I think, than going in and saying, I want to analyze yeah. this right. group. And right. I think both are really valid. Right. But, it, but if you're always in that mode of ethnography, right. and I've done a lot of that over my years of travels of different groups and churches, um, it is harder to enter in. Uh, yes. You have to, at some point, set down the, set down the graph paper and, and, yeah. and move forward into But yeah. now I was intrigued because you talked about attuned, being attuned to your congregation. Because Jeffrey earlier mentioned that in a way he sees you, um, you do have a, an ability to be attuned to, to sort of read your congregation in a way that you can help them understand what they're doing when they're worshiping. So uh, can you say more about that? In other words, it sounds like you get kind of a feel for where maybe who's there or what what where the puzzlement is and sometimes you're taking them through this rhythm of a, of a liturgical form but you realize that sometimes they don't know why we're doing this and sometimes you'll address that's that. that's part of that that's it, so it's partly teaching yeah but it's also partly understanding that liturgy breathes so for for people who do have kind of well liturgy's dead uh, some of it is but rightly ordered and rightly practice, it's a breathing, living thing. And so I think where there's interjection or there's a little bit of, of a comment aside here or there, uh, it's, it's more related to how are things breathing? How, what, is, what is God saying to us today through this? Or how do we want to enter, enter into that? And there's, a, there's more flexibility than I think people at first understand. Yes, that's crucial. But, but it also can be pushed. I mean, it's sort of like knowing, going back to jazz, what are, you know, I could push it way out and, and lose it you know, where it's just not, it's just not appropriate anymore. Um, or I could just not, you know, not play with it and just let it go. And then it's fine. It's okay to do that. Uh, that's more what that pastor as ethnographer is, being attuned to um, where the 
boundaries are, where are the channels, and then within that, where, what, what's the freedom? Yeah. I, I just want to add, I think, that to think of the pastor as the ethnographer, um, he or she is not just the, pa the ethnographer of their congregation either. So part of it is recognizing that when the people of God are gathered and called to worship, they are not coming from neutral spaces into a sacred space. They are coming from contested spaces into a, a gathered sacramental space where the spirit is present. And so in a way to know what it is to pastor this people is to be attuned to the context from which they are coming. So I think the pastor has to equally be an ethnographer of the cultural practices that our parishioners are embedded in, which again is not just being attuned or listening for the messages that are out there in culture, but learning to read, you know, what, what does, as a pastor, what does it look like for me to understand what gaming does to 14 year old boys or, or to 19 year old boys, by the way. I mean, and, and again, this is a different kind of responsibility and it's not an either or, it's not a, you know, a, a witch hunt. It's just saying um, gaming, for example, is a sort of immersive, formative mm -hmm. ritual. And now we're calling parishioners from that space into this worship space. How do we negotiate that? What's going on? Um, I, I think it'd be great if pastors learn to develop those kinds of skills of cultural analysis, which is an ongoing, it's a lifetime of work. But yeah, there's a, there's a, uh, a quote that says uh, from a liturgical theologian says, uh, liturgy creates a new world. And I think to, that's true. And, and, and to know how that functions is to know what the world is that people are, we use the term swimming in, what are the waters are swimming in, you know, all, all week long, and what are the, and what is the world of, of the church and, and, and that liturgy and where those connections are, so. What do you think of Jay's, um, I love how you went from ethnographer to shepherd. In some ways I think it fits better with your argument because an ethnographer can be the detached observer. Yeah. Whereas he went with right. pastor, which is a very engaged right. orientation. Right. Um, and yet it's an, uh, environmentally aware. Even think of the biblical metaphor. You have sheep gates and you have wolves. And so it seems like it really... We still have wolves. The, the expanding, yeah. exactly. And, and the shepherd is embedded, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I would, I would note is that, in fact, ethnography has always been a mode of social analysis that has tried to take embeddedness seriously. So the other modes of social analysis were taken to be distant, cool. Whereas, for example, Pierre Bourdieu, who I talk about in Imagining, the kingdom, um, he's actually trying to say, how, how can you become uh, an ethnographer who, you, you almost have to be a native to be able to understand the practices of a people. So I actually think the, the, the metaphor has a lot of intimacy and embeddedness already carried with it. And then, uh, but I think the, the shepherding piece, exactly. I mean, what, how attuned is the shepherd? to the threats, to the strengths, to the weaknesses. Um, uh, that's, that's a great way to complement that metaphor. And, and I think liturgical renewal, if we, I, I mean, to, to talk about um, where people make changes maybe around liturgy as a result of ethnography, is really, uh, I mean, that has to, you know, there's a sympathy there, there is love that must be part of that, I think, overall within the church, or you're not going to, or, or then it just becomes a, a, a battle over worship, worship wars, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and and it's, uh, we forget that sometimes. That's a great point, yeah. I, I want your honest opinion though. So, okay, what's at stake in pastoral formation is a sort of contested question. So you're saying um, pastors need to be, there's so many adjectives that come around the pastor, right? Mm -hmm. So we're adding ethnographer. Uh, you go through an MDiv and a pastor needs to be a counselor, a pastor needs to be an educator, a pastor needs to be a rhetorician. You, you know, I mean, the, the, the job description of a pastor is unreasonable and um, fictive, to be honest. You can't do all that. Um, honestly, ethnographer, do you, want, do you think that's an essential one that you need to add to your pastoral dis job description? Well, I, 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 you know, I appreciated, Jamie, what you said about embeddedness in that. I don't... I don't think you can be a faithful pastor 
let's we're just talking pastors now, okay? Uh, a faithful pastor without that part of your your identity. Some of the others, to be honest with you, in a liturgical tradition, the the qualities of what it is to be a pastor are some are different. They're shaped differently. Mm. Mm. So you may not need to be all of those things all at the same time or even as well because the role is different than it would be in a tradition like I grew up in where the you know pastor is sort of the, the parson, the man, the, the person, the woman, or whatever it is. Um, it's not focused on, on you. It, there's a very different kind of focus. So I think ethnographer, we're going to use that word, um, really is a part and parcel of that, but it's hard for me to say, well, this is my ethnographer piece. It's just kind of in the, in the background going all the time. That's why I use the word shepherd. I think it's not, not, it's not f fully, uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't comprehend everything, but there is part of that. So yeah, I think it has to be, and I would rather spend time with that piece in formation than some of the other pieces. Mm. Now that's mm. heretical. That's, that's a longer but, conversation. It is heretical, but there, if we're gonna, you know, if, if you have, you know, I've, I can only have so many tools in, in the box, then I, I think that one's really, really Why? key. Because it relates to where you've been and where you're going. And it, it also, under it comes so many other things. Um, and it's really seeing and discerning. It, to me, it's, it's, it's a lot of what the heart of leadership is. Uh, so to me, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty critical. So let's keep the metaphor going. Ethnographer is a, um, is a, a skill, it's a, it's a title, but you talked about a tool set. So what's, what is the tool set of an ethnographer? Yeah, I mean, I, I would say, um, again, I don't want to amplify this too much, but I, I would say what, what, what characterizes the ethnographer is an ability to be able to see that practices carry stories, right? So, so you're, it's just a way of being attuned to the rhythms of communities of practice. And so you're, you're able to read them and see that implanted in them is a kind of direction and orientation. And discipleship is also fostering a direction and an orientation. So you both want to know what you want to foster shepherd people towards but also what you're trying to steer them from and I think that's the piece of it I, I think the ethnographer piece is more crucial precisely when we are talking about pastoring in a missional context do you know what if you're just working with some totally homogenous community that is also totally separatist uh, um uh, in some ways, and, and basically you're just talking to the same people who've only been shaped in, in some very narrow enclave, maybe that's not irrelevant. But if you're trying to plant a church in Seattle, or you're trying to pastor in Seattle and see converts to Christ in Seattle, you better be able to know how to understand the liturgies that those people are emerging from in a wider cultural context. And so many of our places where, where we live are becoming like that. Absolutely. I mean, we used to say, oh, we have these sort of, you know, sort of Christian environments. I, I think that's, I, I think that's, I think they're fading. I really do. Yeah. 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 The Midwest, for example, or Oklahoma is not the, um, the, uh, uh, you know, Christendom we've thought it was or something. Yeah, or or you're in a place like the places in the South where you do have that, but then that, that brings its own set of problems, the kind of civic Yes. Civil religion. I mean, you know, they know, so I, I, I think the eyes to see and that, so I think they're really, you know, Seattle's a good example, but more and more they're just, you know, it's the neighborhoods we live in.